Tell them to lift up. Slide me to the switch. Oh, yeah. It's most That's respectful. Fine. Field always goes to the left. I will let Stephanie know tomorrow. Thank you. When she gets here. Yeah. Do we have any additions, deletions to we'll our do, agenda? No, okay. Adam will do it right oh, Adam, Adam. Good job. No. Can we uh, uh, approve our respect. agenda? Can I have a motion? I make a motion to approve our agenda. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Agenda approved. Is there any public input for board. items on the agenda? <laughs> Nobody. Okay. Consent agenda. Regular board meeting minutes from April 10. We have a motion. Motion. Second. Second from Ryan. All in favor? Passes. Okay, let's move over to our information section. Uh, you know, it's not in, I don't think it is in here, is it? Just want to point out, thank you for your many years of service, Rachel. Last official board meeting, you've done an amazing job as our board secretary and working with the district for so many years. We should have some big extravagant thing for you. Oh, no. Marriott Band. Oh, some <laughs> <sort of thing. laughs> oh, yeah, you might pay a lot on that. That was fun. Uh -huh. We don't know yet. We're we have people learning. We have, bike club. We have cookies for you. Warned you about it. No. <laughs> Best we behavior. Like they don't know what they don't know. <laughs> and also, just for the folks that are watching or going to watch this um, later, um, you know, we've made some really good hires, and we, you know, there was a. Some changes with our life skills program, but we had a vision as a district, and I think it's really exciting to see we hired Brooke as our adaptive life skills teacher, and I believe we have uh, Lee Scott Kathy. will be joining us as well, yes. one of our okay. current aides. So uh, really good there. And then we've uh, renewed some folks, our winter coaches, our, our fall and winter coaches for BHS, HLMS and uh, OC teachers, HLMS teachers, BHS teachers. Yay. And we'll move right over to uh, the HLMS presentation for sixth grade outdoor school. Dun, 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 dun. I'm Bridget Jones, for those of you that don't know, I teach one of the sixth grade classes. I'm one of the sixth grade teachers. Um, so first I wanna start off by thanking you all for approving us to go to outdoor school this year. And I'm already working on some possibilities for next year, so I'll do that. Just for that later, but I had some of the students create a presentation to show you some of their adventure. <clears throat> Banana slug. Oh, no, we don't. Okay. <laughs> so, Not in South Air. Not at Tony's. <laughs> there were a lot of trials and tribulations, but it was very fun and the kids learned a lot and had a great time for the most part. Was this a different camp than last year? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, it was um it was better in some ways and other ways it was a little more difficult. Okay. We did not have uh, very good service for cell phones, so getting out to the parents mm -hmm. back when they were itchy was really hard. Mm -hmm. But we did have heated cabins this year. Nice. And we were able to eat in an inside. Also with nice. Hot meals. nice. Sometimes there wasn't quite enough food, but is that in the cascades? Um, um up by yeah. up by Florence, okay. just yeah. east of oh, okay. east of Lohi. Okay. Yeah, the Boy Scouts. When I was a kid, I went to something that's called Camp Bigel. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> so that was part of the campfire program. Um, it was raining or hailing most of the time, so they didn't want to do one outside. <laughs> so they had a nice fireplace in this uh, Boy Scout Lodge that we gathered around and had a, had a good time. And we were outlaws. We started our own <laughs> fire. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You made out of condona, but you sure warmed off of it. Pretty much. I was running around. But the kids had a good time. Everything was great. They had a lot of fun activities. 
so many great things. Were there other schools there at the same time? There were not. We were the only one there oh, this time. So no. that was really nice. We had the whole facility to ourselves. Whoa. So there's no. I heard we had some top notch volunteers. Yes, we have. Some. Thanks, guys. Okay. So nice. Thank you. Really cool. Like the oh, yeah. Oh, that was supposed to have a little crazy emoji. The deer are totally cool with humans. Like they don't run off. You can just walk right up to them and they're are they addicted to marshmallows? Yeah. That's um, just the kid. No, no, there either. That's the whole campfire situation. <laughs> we heard about that. They were oh, we'll make a list so for the next year. I think that's the only one. I will say thank you very much because yeah. uh, Miss Foster at the very last minute for everybody else that doesn't know at the very last minute Miss Foster became ill oh, no. and Mrs. Jones took on the entire trip on her own. Wow. And was, well, and yes, and Cranick stepped in at the last minute to help us out, but you did a phenomenal <laughs> job, even though you got a curveball at the very last minute. And thank you for all your planning and work on it. You're welcome. She's just grateful Cranet could go, so it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> and that adds the rest of us. Are, I mean, <laughs> it was a great time. It was wonderful. Getting used to the curveballs and getting thrown and driving through them. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you and all the work you put Thank in. You. Thank you. Do you plan to go back to the same camp next year? I do not. I plan on finding a different one. Okay. That has, that has, they have, so this one was renting the facility, so they had no control over the meals or anything. Oh. So what I'm trying to find now is a facility that they they own the facility, they teach the programs, it's all their own, so that way we know what we're getting into is within our price range. Mm -hmm. oh. And if we can't, I'm going to apply for one. There's time to try. Yeah. yeah. So. Make it nice because I'm going next year. So, you know, I want a nice... Easy trip. Hawaii. I mean, Ashley could go three for three. Oh, he is. <laughs> He's already going. That's yeah, right. so, so yeah, I, I have pledged, I have pledged to help uh, from a volunteer. Mrs. Jones with the planning of the next one as well and seeking great. out the camp and the Thank and the logistics you. that go along with it. And yes, it sounds like I'm gonna be a forever sixth grader at outdoors. Yeah. Excellent. We like it. It's, I might as well keep going now. Oh, great. It's great. So Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. Thank you. Move over to Shauna. Um, so in my report, um, it's hard because sometimes when we send you the report, then it becomes old news and there's new new news. Yes. So um, as you know, we're working, we uh, hired an alternative uh, teacher for that portion of it. Um, to try to gear in, but also within the superintendent's meeting, we've been talking about within the region, um, developing a cooperative that will be that we can use each other's programs, but yet keep our FTEs. So that's kind of next year, the ESD got a grant for that. So we're going to do some studies and have some of each employees go from each district to start looking at how we can strategize to use the best for CTE options, alternative options, kind of the whole gamut, because a lot of different districts are struggling with teachers instead of doing an online program where it might be Oregon teachers, it may not be, this would be actually local regional teachers um, creating this um, cooperative. So that sounded really like interesting. So I'm kind of interested in that because it was not only an alternative approach for our kids that are struggling, but it was also another approach to have AP classes, mm -hmm. which is something that we don't have enough of in this building. So I liked the stretch of the, the whole penum of the ones that need the extra support in academics to the ones that need to be challenged more in academics. So that was exciting to listen to. And I'm hoping that it will develop in the uh, direction that we were all talking about. Um, hiring, we're finishing up. We, um, we're still, um, not getting as much interest as we hoped um, with EA positions. Um, we have hired um, one of the two positions for our um, 
one of our programs, but we still have other programs that we didn't fill the position even this year. So we're looking, you know, we raised their um, wages to try to get more equitable wages across the board to be more competitive along the line of the highway, which we are. And then we have that one time, one year only retention slash relocation stipend. And our district um, chose to do it as a relocation um, stipend more than a retention stipend because um, like last year when we hired the special ed teacher, that's an area of high need. So for him to be able to make it down here, he needed because of the cost of living is so much, there was a difference between what he could afford and what he what he was able to rent. And so we gave him a relocation that would make up that balance between his rent of what he could afford and what the only house that he could get into. Um, we did that for a bus driver that came in um, from Arizona or Nevada, yes. one, of the, one of those two. And um, she didn't have anything when she came up um, and she wouldn't have got a paycheck for, I think it was a month and a half into, she wouldn't have had any money. So that was a relocation yeah. fee to do that. and so. That's why we've advertised this one of if they new hire sign with us, that is something relocation um, stipend that we would get them. They sign off that they have to stay with us the complete year or they have to pay it back. Some districts do longer than a year, but I feel like it's a one time money. It's, you are not paying for many years of schooling or anything. So that seems feasible that you need to stay with us for that year. We still haven't gotten very many bites. So We'll push it out again and see what we can get. Um, the CTE building, um, I've, I had another contractor this last week to have a meeting with and he never showed. So I'm hoping that maybe I can find another one to uh, come out. I just need a bid. I just need a bid on the inside so I can move forward. So I'm still struggling with that piece of it. Um, we should know more about the capital projects grant that we applied for. The bus barn, I gave you guys the um, itinerary of the steps of where we're at. We have that special board meeting the 31st um, at 6.30 p.m. to decide after the um, evaluation committee looks at whoever's making offers to do it, then we choose between those. It may only be one person. And then it goes in front of the board to make the final decision. and then you know the list of how it goes from there, that point on. Um, all the projects that we're doing, we're trying to get them started as quickly as possible. That way they can be, some of them need to be finished before school starts. Um, some of them can continue into when school is going on. So, Question for you on the CTE building. Um, we do have at least one bid, right? Um, we have a uh, bid that ZCS gave us of what the project could cost. I don't have a contractor's so, uh, bid. I know I know a contractor is. What do I tell them? Like this, as far as like they're just it, they're going meet with me and we'll walk them over and I'll show them the diagram that ZCS gave us of the inside and all I got to do is just bid on it. Well, I'll employ my my skills of, of persuasion. Okay. <laughs> Yep, that's all I need. I just if need we can, to come if out. we can only get one bid, we can yeah. still act on one bid mm -hmm. if we're not getting other bids. Yeah, right? I just need to be able to write down that at least someone shows up. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's it. Sure. Even if they don't give me anything yeah. back, it doesn't matter because if they show up, then I have record and I'll follow through with thank you for coming. Um, do you have that bid ready? We've already done that with several projects, and then I put the email in with that project showing that we've made the attempt. Yeah, because if not, we're just going to be held up forever. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Any questions for Shauna? Let's go to yeah, I sent you all that CT stuff that I sent to the grant. I sent it in an email too. Oh, when? Today? Today yeah. Okay. Let's go over to Amanda. Um, I don't have anything additional to add to what is already in here, but I did want to say a verbal thank you to the board for the budget committee meeting um, and they approved the budget at our first meeting, which was awesome. And um, so thank you. Um, and then I also wanted to do a verbal thank you to, to the principals um, for reviewing and going over the internal controls of the fundraising and raffling and all that, that policy that we're, we're putting into place coming July 1st. So um, they helped me work on that and we're gonna have some good stuff in writing, so.
Awesome. Um, and then, yeah, other than that, we're just moving, moving right into spring audit. So good time. Yeah. Amanda, how often is a budget approved in the first meeting? Ask for it. You'd have to ask for it. Rachel? I've not seen it before. Hmm. I don't know that I've heard it before. So thank you to all the work you put in that you presented a budget that could be approved in the first meeting. That's amazing. Yeah, this, years I never, this was the first it was uh, very well presented, easy to read. Yeah, the credit doesn't go to us. It was the it was the presentation. Yeah. 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 I could read it and understand it. Oh, that's, that's, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's, that's, that's saying a this lot. This is my dog. I yeah, feel like well. in yeah. the in the past we've wanted to approve it in the first shot, and then there's been Questions still unanswered. Yep. So we were like, okay, well, let's wait till the, but we had all of our answers to all the questions. Well, even last year's Amanda's budget was just one minor little formula error. But other than that, that was the only yeah. gratification that we had to it. So nice work. Yep. It's better than that. Good. Okay, let's move over to Courtney. All righty. So we're in the throes of seat testing for third and fourth graders. Um, we had our pie in the face and um, take Mr. Shea, our PE teacher Yay. to the wall. That assembly was Friday. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's not like a normal assembly. So in my my uh, Monday recorded announcements, I like prepped the kids. And then walking through the classrooms that Friday morning, I heard teachers prepping them. Remember, it's not going to be normal. It's going to be loud. We had 11 staff. 11 of us got pied in the face by kids. I had my fourth grade daughter pie me in the face as her like, you know, goodbye to Ocean Crest. Um, and then Mr. Shea got taped to the wall. It took seven rolls of gorilla tape to hold him to the wall. And after like two rolls, I took the mic and I said, Do you feel like you're sturdy up there? And he's like, No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so um it was it was really fun. I'd never been fighting the face before. I think I'd rather be taped to the wall again. Did Good you enough. get to choose the flavor? I actually put them all together. It was just pie crust, and then I just put a tub of Cool Whip inside oh, each of them. So it was really great. sweet. It That's tasted great. Right. Shaving cream is so much better. <laughs> no, no, because it's, when it gets in your nose, the yeah. whipped cream smells so nasty for so many hours. I've been by it enough times to know. So you know the best. I wanted my staff to be willing to do it again like they did last year. So I'm going to keep with that tub of Cool Whip. <laughs> they were happy with that. Um, we have um, some Coos Force Patrol presentations coming in to talk about um, fire safety with our kids. We just had water safety. I didn't put that on here. We had a water safety presentation um, done a week ago. They came the, around the same time for you. Ours was last week. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, all my teaching positions are filled for next year at this time. I have to say that because we never know, you know what changes will happen, life happens, but I'm just so excited that we have quality people filling and then we get Lisa Marchetti back. So if anyone's yes. been here, Lisa Marchetti was Ocean Crest first grade teacher for a lot of years and um, just moved to the online format during COVID. And she's coming back to be our math specialist and she is like data queen. She and Becky really geeked out over data when they worked together. Um, I, I, we're so thrilled to have her back. Um, and she was my own child's first grade teacher. So I'm just so happy that we get her back in our building. She was my, my yes. voice too. Yes. So, um, and then uh, our kindergarten pre-registration event, we had just on, <clears throat> what's today? Ju Monday. Just, okay. So just last Monday, we had our event. And um, last year we had 27 families register. And this year we had 17. And I was a little worried about, the difference in numbers. I was thrilled last year was our first event ever. So we didn't know how many to get, but um, I think it might be a smaller cohort. Um, Head Start gave us 13 kids last year and this year they're giving us seven. So, you know, that's just like yeah. a little clip of that's just the, the group of kids possibly. Um, I also pushed this event to the beginning of May, whereas last year we did it in the beginning of April. So I'm going to go back to beginning of April next year, thinking that we've hit the spring sports and game schedule. So I'm, I'm hoping that is maybe why our numbers were less, um, but that's good for me to know and to change for next year. And then I was hoping to present with you guys the plans for possible replacement of Castle Crest, but I'm still waiting for, for the designs. But um, he knows that I'm not really sure what our budget is just yet. And so he's that's why he's giving us four different options of cost. And then I'll also be applying for some grants as well. So that's what's happening at OC. Sure.
Becky. I am also really happy for her hiring, <laughs> even though people continue to choose the elementary school. I benefited from that for many years, but I will say we were pretty fortunate at the middle school as well. We had four teacher positions available. Three of them are filled. So we have uh, Jesse Williams coming to us in the fifth grade. She has been a long-term sub both at Harbor Lights and this year at Ocean Crest for about a half a year each. We have someone new to the district named Kaylee Carey, but she comes with some great experience and uh, and some enthusiasm. I think she's going to be a great addition to sixth grade. Our new PE position will be filled by Ashley Hutton, who is uh, a kind of surrogate member of the Bandon community. Although she's new to me, they're moving home and we are happy that she found a place with us. And if anyone knows a social studies teacher who just really loves middle school, send them my direction. That is the one teaching position that we have left. And uh, I'm not looking for much, just a unicorn. And so <laughs> we're going to find one. I'm excited. We do still have some EA positions. Uh, one within our life skills program, and then at least one, possibly two, at the middle school uh, in our special ed department. And uh, so if you know qualified people, I'm really excited about the moves that we're making to provide a wage that might be a little more attractive. Mm -hmm. um, I know we had a pretty stellar looking candidate for social studies and was offered two positions and took the one that paid more. Sure. And it wasn't us. And I understand. But uh, Bandon offers a little more than just a financial reward. I think this, this community is pretty amazing. And um, I know I know I couldn't be offered more money to go to a different district after my time here. So I'm looking for someone with that kind of commitment to our community. And I'm confident that we're going to find them. Um, and then just um, something new that's new to me as well, but an exciting opportunity at the very bottom of my report. Uh, the superintendent and I have talked about ways in which we can best serve our district through special education. We've been working on the vision for special education. And one of the things that we're doing is instead of contracting for someone else to come in and train some of our special education staff on what's called the Crisis Prevention Institute, de-escalation and behavior management. And um, it includes a little bit of the physical intervention if needed. Um, instead, we're going to send me to a training so that I can be trained to train our staff. Mm -hmm. It will allow us to broaden the scope of staff that we are training in this. Uh, having been through it every year as a principal and I think four years as a classroom teacher, I can tell you I learn something each and every time I go through it. It either solidifies current practice, reminds me of something else I can incorporate, but it's not just for our special education staff. And so this will give us the opportunity to provide that training uh, in a more cost effective manner so that we can make it available. Um, specifically, I know Courtney and I have talked about availability at the elementary level. So I'm just really excited about being a part of of realizing this vision for how we can best meet the needs, not only of our students in special education, but our district as a whole. Very good. Any questions for me? All right. Thank you, Becky. <laughs> Melissa. All right. So it is spring in a high school, and so there are five billion things. We have kids <laughs> so hyper involved um, with hyper boys golf, girls golf, I mean, baseball, softball, rescheduling. Mr. Rupert has done an amazing job of trying to keep them moving in the right direction and going to the places. Um, we have band. We had a, a group that is freshly back from Hawaii, so a few of them are a little more tanned after their um, their field trip there. Um, wanted to call out um, Cal Taylor, who stepped in when Mr. Hatfield was un unable to go with the environmental science classes. And so um, Mr. Taylor stepped in and did a really nice job for us. So um, that was that was something that could have gone a little sideways, but he handled it really, really well. So I appreciate that. Um, so on the list are things like seniors last day and the senior trip and the barbecue and the all right. It's just it's it's a. Uh, coming to a close, which is amazing to me. Um, we also have one EA position here that is open and available. Um, all the teachers are uh, hired. The one position that we're still looking to fill is the um, vice principal AD position. So we have an offer in on that. And so waiting to um, confirm with that person. So hopefully have good news here shortly. 
Um, with also being busy, I think we get used to how we do things here and, and just the expectation that we have here, but we take kids to other places and they do really well as well. So we uh, took kids to the SWAC Skills Day competition and Ireland Lake came home with a number one uh, MIG welding uh, trophy, basically. She was the only female in any of the welding and she won. Awesome. <laughs> I know, which was awesome. Um, Parker Lang was third in that and then he was second in stick welding. They also had Algebra One competition and uh, in geometry, Michael Cisco got first in that and Jacob Weston got first for algebra two. So taking our kids to compete head to head with a lot of bigger schools, they did really well. And Jacob Weston, who hadn't really done sculpture before, made a dragon and got second in the sculpture oh, competition excellent. too. So um, it, that was that was pretty fun. Uh, they also, uh, Mr. Holy Cross and Mr. Markin are running with um, the teacher at Marshfield, a skills competition for these last few weeks. They, the kids have been turning in all of these things. It was interesting to talk to um, Mr. Holy Cross because the group has over $6,000 worth of prizes that will be there. And Glenn is his name up there, was amazed because Bandon has 100 entries, which is more than all the other small schools in our area combined. Let's go. Second only to Marshfield. And I think they had 120. Whoa. And so our and they're kids, huge. They're, yeah. And our kids are just like okay. stepping in and doing really good things. So I'm I'm excited about that. Um, and then speech and debate went. Kenny's not here, unfortunately, because I was going to leave this for him to explain. But they brought home a second place trophy for the state tournament, which is actually Whoa. for us is it's four a three two one a is one big clump well and so we compete against once again marshfield and all the other bigger schools and um we had some amazing things our, our very own kenny mcmillan was second in the congress debate daniel cabrera was second in poetry and third in dramatic interpretation tyler eikoff was fourth in dramatic interpretation and maya tullis was fifth in di and so um New mm -hmm. coach Ashley yeah. Pearson is very excited and very happy with how our kids she's are doing. doing a great job. She has. She's doing a really an amazing job. Um, people, two more things. People have talked about the Community 101 group. That um, event is going to be here, held here, right here, uh, May 16th at 7 p.m. The kids are handing out money that they have passed forward to nonprofits in the area with the focus this year on mental health. And so they uh, are granting those um those awards to those local nonprofits in this here, right here in this library on the 16th. If you guys haven't gone to that, go to it. I, those, good. they, they blew me away last year yeah. with their presentation yeah. there. Yeah, they did a really nice, they do a really nice job and it's for a good cause and they really are passionate about it. So it's really great. And then now putting on my curriculum director's hat, we have gone through the math adoption. So we went through and went up to the, ESD to have our teachers look through all of that. We then came back and they narrowed it down. The other night we had a um, open community forum to look at all the had all the materials here so that yeah, people we could look and see. Over. Thank and you. We're, we're hard nosed about this and we were very pleased. Oh, good. So we were. It was uh, it was really impressive. We were expecting you know what we're going to find here and it was really nice stuff. Yeah. yeah. So we we narrowed it down. I to, thought by two, and I was I put it in my calendar for six, and I showed up at seven, and they were all walking out the door, and I feel horrible for that. I'm sorry again. But we made time. But for we made time. They for stopped you. and made time, and I was so excited to hear Mrs. Radcliffe has gotten very creative about how to make this work the best for our students and how it works for them. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited to see it roll out and come to fruition with our district. Yeah. I, I'm I'm excited too. So just so you know, the elementary through eighth grade is going to go with I ready math. And then starting at the ninth grade and up, we will be working with Oregon Big Ideas. Um, that company for that is Cengage. I don't know why they do things like that, but it's Cengage. Um, so I, I'm getting the quotes together to be able to talk to Amanda to say exactly what we need. I'm waiting on the I ready quote. So I've been working on that this last week too. Um, and we are getting creative to figure out how we can offer, as I've talked about the multiple paths in here um, about algebra and geometry and algebra two, trying to create another path that is algebra one and higher um, for students to either have more an elective math options, because some people apparently do that, um, that like math to take extra courses or finding another pathway in order to get their graduation requirements. And so I'm looking at a financial algebra class um, and also a statistics class, but I may need to come to you um, 
particularly with the financial algebra, because when it was vetted by the state of Oregon, it didn't have its teacher edition. And so it got marked down and not on the list because it didn't have good teacher supplementals. It didn't mm -hmm. have good teacher resources. It didn't have that. Now we have that. And so I may need to have it come before the board to say that, yes, we can use this book and it makes sense for us. Um, that would be another requirement, but I'll let you know. Yes, sir. A weird one. So when I was a senior, they had a zero period for calculus. So yeah. just so you know, mm. there are nerds out there like me that do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. School before school. Absolutely. Take math. And I, now I we can see you on. Yes, that would hurt. So, so absolutely. And we don't have that, but we have actually have Matt Ango, you know, teaching extra. So yeah, we're, we're being creative to try and find as many pathways to differentiate for our kids as we can, and, but it takes a while, you know, it takes a couple of years to make it all happen and to get schedules set and to, to figure it out how to meet kids. So that's, that's continuing to be the goal is to meet kids where they are and we're growing in that way. We have ways to go, but we do have plans and we're figuring it out. So awesome. that's where we're at. So just the, the real quick, the other piece of that that I was so excited about was this curriculum that Mrs. Radcliffe is coming up with is going to allow our students that don't necessarily have any use for Algebra 2 or that's not part of their college bound or wherever the direction they're headed. But this will still allow them to get a full diploma, which is the coolest part, yeah. rather than getting up with a modified diploma because they don't have that three years of Algebra 1. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So right. this third, this will count as that third year so they get their full standard right. diploma, which is Thank so you. exciting. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. Awesome. Good job. Jordan. Perfect. So we are under the craziness of spring. So we're on a, on the back stretch though. Um, district track is coming up on um, May 19th and 20th. So that's coming up pretty quick. Uh, it's in Toledo. So we'll have quite a few kids qualify uh, to be able to go to districts and then from districts. Um, the top two in each event, plus some at-larges will qualify for state, which is a Memorial Day weekend, the Thursday and Friday before. So we'll have that going. Um, softball and baseball are finishing up the regular season here next week. They have this week and next week. Um, so senior night will be May 17th. So that'll be baseball and softball senior night. And then uh, our baseball team is in a great spot to um, hopefully clinch a playoff spot and uh, potentially have a chance to, to win league and qualify for the state playoffs. So we're excited for that. Um, boys golf is going in districts right now. They are sitting second after the first day. So mm -hmm. um, they have one more day of competition left. So they're chasing St. Mary's. And uh, so we, three of the really top teams in the state are all in our district. So the district tournament is really kind of like a state preview as well. because there's, there's some really good teams in our district. Um, girls golf just finished up with districts. Um, our Jessica did a great job in bringing the program back. We didn't have anybody qualify for state, but she had four girls that, that golfed all year. Super excited, and um, they're going to stick it out for next year. And they're they're really excited, a bunch of underclassmen. So we're excited to continue getting that program back and um, growing that. Uh, our middle school sports just wrapped up last Friday. They had their uh, district meet up in Florence, so we had some kids do a really good job at that. Um, there is a middle school state meet. It's not really. Uh, something that's like sanctioned through the school district kids can uh, choose to go. It's outside of our season. So if they choose to go, then their parents can take them up to that meet. We help them get registered and then their uh, transportation or everything's kind of on them because it falls outside the window of our middle school sports uh, calendar. But we have a couple of kids that have some qualifying marks that might decide to go, but it's kind of an optional thing. So I've talked to a couple of parents and they'll kind of decide in the next few days if uh, that's something that some of them want to continue. Um, our band was OSA Team of the Month, yeah. which is huge. So uh, they compete in state this uh, Friday. So me and Jeff were talking when we do the calendar, we should always make sure our in-service day in May is on the Friday of state band because it yeah. is absolutely crazy. We have away track meet, away baseball, softball, away band. Um, it's good. It's, it's quite creative. We have three trips. We have myself and mrs sin will be taking bands up to state band to pick up those athletes and then going to track meets and baseball so they can get to those meets at times and games so we uh, really appreciate jeff we spend a lot of time trying to be as creative as we can to get our kids not have to miss anything and that's that's super cool that we can do that for all of them so uh and kudos to the schedule the last couple of years it's worked out like that and it's, it's been amazing for us to be able to do it um we have a couple teams that are planning to take some overnight uh, trips pretty much all in state this year uh, for some summer activities. I was hoping to have the final list to you guys just uh, 
for your reference during this meeting, but I will have it at the June meeting as we're waiting to knock kind of line up a couple of days for just a couple of sports. But, um, you know, our cross country always goes to the Steens running camp in July. Our football team is going to a Lowell football camp in July. Volleyball is going to a team camp in Ben in August and maybe a JV team camp at Marshfield. Um, our girls basketball always goes to a tournament at Country Christian and the Oregon State team camp this year. And our boys basketball is looking at potentially going to the Seaside uh, team camp. So just waiting to to kind of get all those things lined out. Um, again, you know, all these trips are paid out of the team's individual fundraising efforts. Um, we don't provide uh, buses or transportation or pay bus drivers or anything like that or pay the coaches to go do that. It's something that's optional in the summer. Um, it's also optional for the kids. It's not a requirement to be able to be a part of that program, but it provides them some really great opportunities that'll uh, help them advance in their sport, but also make some like lasting memories with their teammates that, that they'll always have. Um, Jeff's great about it. Fans are available a lot of times. Coaches will put in a request, you know, if there's someone and there's no bands being used, borrow a couple of bands to help transport them. Um, and then they carpool things like that. But I'll have that final list uh, for you guys by June, just, just for your reference. Um, if anything gets added after that, uh, again, it would fall under the same <laughs> guidelines as that the team would be paying for it, not something that the district provides since it's out of season. Um, final thing I got is we have a couple coaching um, positions, Grant Kudlak. Sorry, Becky, but uh, took a um, high school assistant position. So that'll open up our middle school <laughs> head coach position. He was the he was a middle school head football coach last year. And, and him and Coach Carmack had, had some great talks, and he wants to move up to the high school. And um, he is amazing. Yeah, he does. And a great he job. will do great work with those boys. And he's from kind of down in the uh, Porterford kind of area, which is great because we co-op with them. So that helps us bridge that gap with having somebody from down there that helps get our kids kind of uh, the Porterford kids interested in coming up and playing with us and everything. So it, it's been it's been a great, great fit. Um, we did fill our hair, head cheer coach since then, uh, Ashley Pearson. So we're super excited for that. Um, she has a, a great vision of what she thinks can help get the interest back in as since COVID, it's, it's been kind of peer program been struggling. So we're hoping maybe in-house and having somebody the kids are familiar with and you know involved in speech and stuff like that, maybe we can get some kids going. And so we're, we're excited uh, for that. And so um, we'll have a couple middle school positions that we will have to fill, but I think most of our high school coaching positions um, are filled for the next year. And so we're excited to excited to move forward. Thank you for everything you guys do. And we're, we're excited to finish the school year strong. Awesome. Thank you. It's exciting. Mrs. Pearson can hold some English grades hostage to get girls to come out. It's true. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. If you're willing to get up and speak, and talk in front of she keeps saying and dance too so hoping i think to get kids who maybe would want to do some some dancing too so well, she's a big bring it on person so she yeah, she's like oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah of a collaboration between the district and the city to create a, 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 a housing plum, you know, like something that would really tip the scale on recruitment because we've got the land. Yeah. And is, is there anything? Move yeah. Uh, lots of meetings behind closed doors uh, with myself and the city abandoned okay. and potential developers. So there should be an RFP going out uh, this month to try to find a developer with a vision to present to us That's, or multiple yeah. developers. Is that, that would be really attractive. Plus the fact that you can say most of the crime in Bandit is raccoons. That always attracts people. <laughs> the mosquitoes <laughs> die of hypothermia. Right. As long as you don't look at the middle school. Uh, <laughs> no, no Kenny tonight. Leaving me. <laughs> no Kenny tonight. So, um, I see there's some some stuff we've already covered on his report. Is there anything that anybody wants to point out from uh, Kenny's report? Has this uh, issue with the cornhole tournament been finally reconciled, or is it still? Is that issue? Yeah, I don't know. That seems to like the police meeting. seem to think they did not lose. Oh well, the, 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 
Did the boys in blue did lose, as I understand it, for the children. And so AD, you get to put a final axe when they come into the office. You yeah, know, they, they'll snack yeah, they'll they they <laughs> they Alan Cornhole, you can have a granola bar. Yeah, but we can make it some, <laughs> we can make that some some stickers that they can wear that say teacher instead and the name might there be. There we go. They yeah. complain that the sacks weren't the bags weren't regulation or something, you know, the Tom Brady thing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 As an adult that loses to kids in a lot of games and PE and stuff, it's kind of humbling at times. I hate I hate playing horse with my daughter because oh. she'll beat me and I'm trying. I'm really trying. Oh, wow. 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 Prom is going on. They'll be dancing under the stars at Ocean Crest at OC, Elementary yeah. School. Thanks to your black curtains we right here. We're going to have black friends for that. And thank you, Sid Anthony, for volunteering to be our DJ. And oh, of course. Thank you for everything. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And it's free, Courtney. Don't worry. It's free. Don't worry. And he pawned the middle school off on someone else once again. You no, know, my daughter actually asked me like, why I wasn't DJ. And I said, just don't. You don't need to bring <laughs> everybody's <laughs> thieving from the middle school. <laughs> I know they're stealing from you, <laughs> oh. but they're not taking your light, so don't worry. Thank you. Yes, you're still there. You still, there. <laughs> you still win for glitter. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna excuse you, folks, if Wait, you would Jeff, like to Jeff, be. Jeff, oh yeah, Jeff, I'm sorry, I didn't see your. Get it, Jeff. He's yeah, only a on the second page. Jeff, that's Jeff, why. Yeah. Yes. Wow. No page two. Get sent to the second page. You're out. Yeah. Anyway, I, I don't have a lot. So, anyway, I'd like to say, come up with something. <laughs> I, I want to thank Jordan because uh, we hit our stride this year and, and uh, it was a much easier year as far as it's been really busy. But we've been able to get together and make last minute changes and second changes and third changes <laughs> and rain delays and everything else. And we've done everything we can uh, to make it all happen. So, I thank you for your help on that. And uh, I appreciate it. And I'm going to miss you next year. Hopefully. You might still be here. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. You might miss him. You're not going to get there. Okay, well, then I'll go this way. I pray you're still there. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I don't, I don't have a lot. We're just chugging along to the end. Um, it's going to be a crazy last two weeks of the year. Uh, I'm not really sure exactly how it's going to go yet. About 90%. But uh, there's always something that happens to throw it off. So I'm not. Jeff being, got a new van. I'm yeah, not being yeah. negative. We did. I did find a new van. We've got the trips to uh, Portland for the Hawaiian trip. We lost two vans for a week. Uh, we could make it. So Sean had already pointed at me about a month ago to go find something, and uh, I was able to uh, locate a pretty good van, uh, 19, uh, 2000, 2021, Ooh. and uh, it's really nice. And uh, so we got that going now. So I have five vans now, and uh, that helped us get through the, the week. But uh, we need them anyway. We have more adult kids going next year and things happening, so it's worthwhile. But anyway, uh, Shauna, too, has is, is helped me along the way grow from my, uh, I guess, the business side of things within my growing pains here to the school side of things, mm -hmm. public view. Uh, I've hit some strides and I've hit some curbs, uh, but I want to thank her. But no ditches, so no curbs. Ditches. Exactly. Okay. I haven't totally fallen in, but I just want to make sure I shout out to her. I really loved working here this year. And with her help, it was a lot better than last year. Nice. Good. So Very thank good. you. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, now I can excuse you folks that aren't on the board if you would like to be excused. Oh, thank you. Um, you yeah, you're welcome to stay. Uh, you know, are you going to have any policy questions? <laughs> are you going to have any policy no questions? Because if you do, Melissa and Becky are the, the ones one. because they changed the language in it. Um, it should be. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm guessing it. not, but. You I never just didn't know if you had questions. You wanted to ask me to clarify. Yeah, I'm not sure. We're undoing your excuse. You have We're undoing your excuse. They might have questions. Should I be planning twin day with my friend Jordan? I mean, oh, my <laughs> you're so twins. So twinning. I will be. Yeah, when we get there, I'll.
Because they change the language. I would give you the answers that you might All right. Before we get to that, let's uh let's pay some bills. Uh, paying the bills in the amount of two hundred twenty-four thousand sixty-seven dollars and seventy-four cents. Can I have a motion? So moved. You have a second. Yes, I second. From Stan, thank you, Stan. Any discussion on the bills? All those in favor? Hey, I'm... Anthony, are you abstaining? Or... Okay. That's the way. Motion passes. Uh, next is we need to nominate board members to negotiate our superintendent contract um so i believe we were going to ask anthony if you were willing to to help on that i don't even like her <laughs> <laughs> the real work tomorrow yeah that was just on record okay. <laughs> that, was, that was not statement on record yes absolutely and it'd be nice if we could have one more person as a part of that negotiation please I think you should assign one of the people that aren't here. <laughs> well, I was going to ask Angela, but I didn't realize she was traveling. I think she'd be really good for that. Yeah, I'd be. But we need to get we need to get on it quickly. I'll just, okay. yeah. Would you be willing to do that until um, Angela gets back? Then, uh, yeah. But yeah, well, hopefully it doesn't take that long. Yeah. Uh, we need to get on it quickly. So. Yeah. All right. So um, we have Anthony, will have Anthony and AJ. Okay. Can I have a motion, Stan or Ryan? So moved. Ryan, Stan? Well, to Anthony and AJ? Does that work for you? Oh, uh, to do Will what? you second that? Oh, yes, I second that. Okay. All right. And those in favor? All right. Actually, I haven't got the copy right here. We can just pass it right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, for our policy readings, first reading policy. JFCH, JFCI AR, use of drugs and alcohol. Um, let's see here. Let me Riveting. pull this up. Yeah. yeah. Thank, once again, thank you all for going through these. You can look at the dates on them to tell how long it's been. Yes. Uh, 2001 was the last time on this. A lot of them were in 96. Mm -hmm. yeah. 95, 96, 98. Lots of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My question was on the first offense, drugs and alcohol. Um, we X'd a lot of the old language and. So is, does that state that that's an automatic first offense? So meeting with the principal, the ISS, the suspension from activities, third party party and the referral, to, that's all. Okay. So what we did is we we took what we had agreed upon even last year of how we would handle things because we wanted to be in in pretty well lockstep to say how do we handle this using a lot of what we had have been learning about ACEs and trauma informed and trauma invested and trying to to get kids um, where they need to be a lot of um, with more like restorative justice and trying to get them more help. This is kind of more in line with a lot of that learning that we had been going through. And so, yes, those are all things that we would go through, depending on what it was too, because it is part of it is also administrative um, discretion. discretion on those things. So, um, I mean, always if there was something like that, there would be a phone call to a parent or things like that. But um, those we can't force a, a third party because that would be paid for by the parents that so we can suggest it or recommend it. Um, for that so there's just things and of course if it was a drug offense or whatever law enforcement would automatically be called so those are things that we kind of handle them two prongs one is the school side and one is then the law enforcement side and they they have to be full of that i didn't catch this when we were going through the policies but on the first offense on this one uh the language is suspension from activities but then if you drop down to the tobacco first offense it says two week, 14 day activity suspension. So it spells it out. And that's what but we it didn't in the it didn't in the mm -hmm. drugs and alcohol one. Didn't spell out How what long? the what the time period it, was. So I was kind of confused on that. Back and forth on do we want it spelled out that completely and then or 
do we want it to be more broad language? And I know. So I, would it, I think the, the question is, is would it ever be less than what the tobacco is? No, no. So maybe at least or up to or something that it says that you have at least these two weeks, it could be more depending on like if they're so right it, what it was. Selling, it, selling it might be different than a two-week right. suspension. I think that's what you were asking. And yeah, so because it spells it out on the tobacco one and it doesn't on the other. So um, I'm not sure how I missed that in that first go. Yeah. And in our, in our activities, athletics, code of conduct, they are linked like, you know, tobacco, drugs, and, and alcohol. It, it breaks it down in that, that it is a minimum two week suspension for those. This is one that we skipped over on our first go. I thought to yeah, come, they asked to come us, because they asked us to put in and yeah. put in. Right. We didn't have them there. Okay. And well, so we wanted, mixed yeah. Mixed together at this point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what do we so want to do? At least that? That. So say, say a minimum oh, of. Okay. A minimum. There needs to be a minimum there of two weeks. If it's more than that, that's up to your administrative piece, but it needs to be at least the minimum needs to be equal to what you would give for tobacco. So then who would communicate with our OSBA person about changing the language? Okay. So then if we just added minimum two week, 14 calendar days, minimum seven week, 50 calendar days, like to match, because that's what we use as the bar this is for tobacco this one's for tobacco well i guess i'm confused because no, i don't think at any point i would suspend for seven weeks i think oh, activity suspension Got activity yeah. okay right because okay, that's how it is right now the first is right. 14, 14 calendar, calendar days right. the second is 50 calendar days oh. and then it's done for the year yeah. and i think we had that matching with the that's we wanted to make sure that everything was lined up from athletic to mm -hmm. school based at the high school to school based at the middle school so that it's a consistent expectation across the board. So Rachel, when we get through the rest of these policies and go for a motion, do we just need to motion the addition of that language um, into this meeting or? Well, since this is the first reading, I think it can go ahead and pass mm -hmm. and then we'll get the, the revised one for the second reading. Yep. Okay. That's okay. what the first reading is supposed to be for is any input edits. or, or mm -hmm. edits. Yeah. Okay. So we have an edit there. Um, next policy, uh, JFCG, JFCG, JFCI, uh, use of tobacco products, alcohol, drugs, or inhalant delivery systems. Was there anything on that from anybody? Just or? that that's the data that we're going to use to put on the mm -hmm. other. Okay, and then uh, JFCG-AR discipline for use, possession, distribution, or sale of tobacco products, alternative nicotine products, or inhalant delivery systems. Any concerns or questions on that one? Sorry, that was the one we had. We had to add different words to that. We had to add the alternative nicotine products and inhalant delivery systems because those are two new things that aren't really aren't really nicotine, but they're selling them as patches and still give the stimulant as that. So if it's not in there, then kids are like, it's not in there, so I can do it. Mm -hmm. So we made sure it was in there. The Zen packs, I think they call yeah. them. Yeah. So they're good about dangerous. telling us about it. So we just added to it. Then we're uh, deleting GBEDA-AR. And last but not least, the proposed policy GBEDA-AR, the new language on that. So all of those policies, all in one, do I have a motion? I move to approve the first reading on all of those policies. Yeah. We I have a sec that. second from Stan. Any further discussion on those? That's all in that. favor, that passes. Uh, we don't have any public input for items not on the agenda unless somebody submitted something. No. Okay. Uh, I will motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Meeting adjourned. Thanks, Frank. May thirty first is our yeah. Well, budget. 
in the map, right? So I have a brother that is looking at the 